Good morning. We welcome you to the house of the Lord as we give Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thank God for each of you. Just a reminder, sign an attendance card and leave that in one of the plates at the exits. Uh, you'll notice uh, a lot of white in your bulletin, uh, not a lot going on, although uh, uh, what should be in our schedule uh, beginning actually today at 9.30, uh, we began uh, junior confirmation in the Agape room. So uh, we had three students and uh, hopefully they enjoyed their time there. Uh, as you remember your catechism days and how much fun you had there. But uh, again, uh, every Sunday morning, 9.30, uh, junior confirmation uh, for, for quite a while yet to come. Also, of course, uh, family night still continuing. We're still having lots of fun. We have good food, uh, Bible study, and then I know the bells have been practicing. And then that's followed by a short devotion here in the sanctuary. And of course, we'll be doing that till uh, February 22nd, I believe, is Ash Wednesday. So uh, that's coming on. Uh, also, uh, not in your bulletin, we did have uh, 20 come for New Year's Eve. Uh, so we had a good turnout for New Year's Eve, considering all the great football that was on. So let's open this, uh, I can't see in these readers, 397. Please rise as we follow divine service too as printed in your folder. We make our beginning this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us all Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into the one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, strengthen our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our entroit today from Psalm 2. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dashed him to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. We continue with the Curie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above. And for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, amen. Dear saints, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Our God, O oh God, our Father in heaven, 
at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him as your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we humbly pray that you would graciously make all who are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity faithful in their calling as your children and then inheritors with him of everlasting eternal life with you in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Before we get into the Scriptures, you have in your worship folder our statement of our foundation for our doctrine, which is the Bible. So together, let us recite that. The Bible I hold is God's word from cover to cover. It makes me wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training me how to live. I need to read, listen, and learn from this foundation laid by God. This is most certainly true Amen. We now hear from God's word through the reading of the scriptures. Today's Old Testament reading from Isaiah. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeons, from the prisons, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. This is my name. My glory I will give no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I will now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell them to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's epistle lesson from Romans. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that the grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have united with him in death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in resurrection like his. We know that our old self 
was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has, has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that he will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has domination over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to to God in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please ride, rise for the reading of the gospel? <coughs> Today's gospel from Matthew. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Having heard God's word, we now confess our Christian faith using the statement of faith under the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn number 405. To Jordan's River Came Our Lord.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So often the story of Jesus seems to swing between the ordinary and the extraordinary. And what appears to be an ordinary birth is attended by extraordinary circumstances. Angels from heaven and of course a bit later magi from the east which we uh, observed last Friday in the epiphany of Jesus from the east and they came to worship him. And an ordinary Passover journey to Jerusalem ends in the extraordinary scene of the boy Jesus in the temple. And now at the start of Jesus' public ministry we find John the Baptist preaching and baptizing on what appears to be just another routine day when suddenly someone is singled out in the crowd and the extraordinary happens. Remember, we have you tie the gospel accounts together. Uh, those famous words from John, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So it shouldn't surprise us in our short gospel text from Matthew this morning that John would say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I should be baptized by you. Why? Because John's baptism was for repentance of sins. Remember, Jesus had no sin. He was the blameless, sinless son of God. That's hard for us to comprehend. Why? He was born in Mary and, and he was raised basically in the normal way and followed all the Jewish regulations. But he was sinless. He was sinless. So John had that part right. But who was he being baptized for? For us. To fulfill the law. To come as a sin offering for you and for me and for all the world. Of course, in Advent, we have stories about John the Baptist. And we know that many people came to John to be baptized Many people came out to him and from the whole region of the Jordan. That's just prior to our text in verse 5. And then doing what? Confessing their sins, they were baptized. Remember also the Pharisees and the Sadducees came out at John's response to them, you brood of vipers. You know, he didn't believe them that you're coming to be baptized because that means you're confessing your sins and they didn't do that. And they had many. But then Jesus came. And imagine, you know, we don't have, uh, the scriptures don't give us enough background here. Did John know he was coming? Or was he out there preaching and teaching, you know? The kingdom of God is near. And the one whose sandals I'm unworthy to untie will be coming. And be baptized for the repentance of your sins. John preaching and teaching out there, was he taken aback? You know, we, uh, the scriptures don't tell us. Did, but John, you know, and realize too, John was kind of a walk his own way kind of guy. You know, he was dressed in camel hair and he ate wild locusts. Getting ready for this sermon. And I don't think, I can't remember if I've ever looked this up before, but it never dawned on me to think about it. Well, was that right? You know, you got all those dietary laws in the Old Testament and the books of Moses, you know, that you, you don't eat this, you don't eat that. But guess what? There's a part in there, well, you can eat certain insects, but they got a description there. Basically, it's saying you can eat grasshoppers. Like, okay, well. Yeah. Thanks a lot, you know. Don't eat pork, don't eat a pig, but you can have grasshoppers. Well, that was John, you know. And he was out there doing what he did. He was that one that Isaiah talked about, the voice in the wilderness, proclaiming that Jesus, the Messiah, was coming. So, Jesus came then to stand with and for the sinners. 
And of course, as I said earlier, John at first refused, I need to be baptized by you. And that's a duh statement. Yeah, John, we got that. You know, just a few weeks ago, we had to deal with, with John sending his disciples to, uh, once he was in prison and facing death, and, 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 you know, we'll go and see if that's the Christ. Well, John, wait a minute. John, through the power of the Holy Spirit, proclaimed him. John, through the power of the Holy Spirit, declaimed, proclaimed, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So I, I didn't buy some of the commentators. Well, you know, John was in prison. Was he, you know, losing his faith and yada, yada? No. No. This is John the Baptist, the voice that Isaiah talks about. By the way, you got to know in verse 1 from the Old Testament, read, Behold my servant. Who that servant is? It's Jesus, it's the Christ. My chosen one, in whom is my delight? Which is then roughly paraphrased at the baptism. For Jesus is baptized to fulfill all righteousness. That's what Jesus says. Let it be so for now, for it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. The law of God is being fulfilled One step at a time, Jesus is on the mission. The Jesus whose birth we celebrated on December 24th and again on Christmas Day on the 25th, that Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Mary, is now beginning his public ministry. You may have thought, well, you know, he could have started preaching at 20 or 21 or even 18, but realize under Jewish culture, you weren't considered worthy to listen to till you were 30. Now you might think, well, that's for, you know, for many of us, that's really young. But realize, 30, you were old in the time of Jesus. The lifespan of Jesus and Jesus' day in biblical times, roughly 37. So if you were 30, you were, you were old, which even makes it when we, we have the story of Simeon and, and Anna, in their 80s, wow, to live that long in biblical times was almost a miracle. But the law of God is fulfilled. That's why Jesus came. That was the whole deal. Jesus had a mission. The Son of God came down from heaven, was born as we're born, born in that stable with Mary as his mother, the Son of Mary, but also the miraculous, supernatural Son of God. And, you know, people say, well, how do we know that was, you know, we have the story of Jesus and, and his birth. Well, how many people do you know that went on to do what he did? How many people went on to do what Isaiah talks about here 750 years before? The deaf to hear, the blind to see, the lame to walk. A couple weeks ago when When John sent the disciples, that's what Jesus told them. Tell John what you see. Was for John, it was for the disciples who later followed Jesus to do the miracles that he did. Oh, by the way, and raise the dead. Now that's kind of a big deal. And so then in this somewhat ordinary baptism, becomes extraordinary. Behold, the heavens were opened up to him. I like the ESV because they, they use the Greek term, I do. Uh, we were talking about that the other night uh, in Bible study. The, the Greek term, I do, behold, and, and a lot of times your English translation says, well, look, and, but it'll be an exclamation mark. No. Behold. Behold. The heavens opened. This is God's way of saying, it's all my word, but this is my exclamation mark. Behold the word of God. Behold the Lamb of God. And behold the heavens opening up. Why? Because his righteousness, his fulfillment by his passion, death, and resurrection, his righteousness is now our righteousness. That's 
Paul talking about that in Romans 6, words that, that we've used at many Christian funerals. We're baptized into Christ Jesus to be baptized into his death. But if we've been baptized into his death, we're baptized into his resurrection. That Jesus, God's son, came. And now as we go through the new year, we're in the epiphany. The light is coming to the world. The light, the divine light, God's own son. As we've been said in, from Romans, we've been baptized into Christ Jesus. Many of you in this font here or in churches, wherever you were at, or if you were uh, baptized uh, uh, sometimes in a creek or a lake or wherever, baptized how? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, some of our Christian brothers and sisters say, well, well you Lutherans don't have a right because you just sprinkle, which, by the way, they've done since the first century, but that's another story. And we don't take issue with, with immersion, but it's what's going on. What's happening in our baptism? What does happen? It's God's grace coming to us. It's nothing we're doing. It's God working on us. The waters of baptism that God says today to us, today you are my child and I will be with you. Which is, by the way, for years and years and years, I've told to our non-confirmed children when they come up to the altar, to the communion altar, to the rail, remember your baptism. Why? Because that's who we are, the baptized children of God. We have been given God's grace so that we might walk in the newness of life. And in, our bapti in his baptism, Jesus begins his path to fulfill all righteousness for our sake, for our salvation. This was just the beginning. Of course, we know what follows, which we'll have. Strangely, we jump, we have all this middle ground stuff, and the epiphany, and then for the first Sunday of Lent, in a few weeks, we'll have what? The temptation of Jesus, that he goes from this baptism into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The devil think, boy, he didn't know. Realize the devil is not omnipotent. He doesn't know all that's happening. But he knows who Jesus is, and he knows something can't be right. And boy, if I could turn him, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? But on this day, the baptism of Jesus, may we remember our own baptism. And of course, to those there, the day that Jesus was baptized, and to early hearers and readers of Matthew's gospel, the giving of the Spirit, the anointing of the Son, leaps out and shouts approval, this is my Son whom I am well pleased. And the voice from heaven says, Son, from the very inner circle. Dear friends, it is extraordinary. It is supernatural. And it can't get any better than that. For God declares that he is well pleased. And with these words, God the Father gives his divine stamp of approval on what Jesus has done and will yet to do. For he has stood with us. He has stood with sinners. He has made himself one of us. As I said before, this is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. For there is still the cross and the empty tomb to come. And we are baptized into that death and into that resurrection. As St. Paul reminds us in today's epistle text. All righteousness was fulfilled in Christ's doing, starting with his baptism. His righteousness becomes our righteousness at our baptism because faith is planted and we become sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. Today, we honor and remember Jesus' baptism. And as we do, may we also remember our own baptism and the gifts that God has bestowed upon us in those holy waters of our baptism. Amen.
Now may that peace of God, which does transcend all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus this day and every day. Amen. Please rise as we continue with the offertory on page four. We had to our prayer list, uh, sadly, informed this morning for, by phone call, uh, Joanne Klassen's uh, husband Jim passed away last night. We add them to our prayers. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray this day for all our congregational officers, leaders, and members that you will continue to bless us with mutual love, harmony, and unity, and guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit so that all we do and say will be to your praise, glory, and honor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And dear Heavenly Father, on this, the day after Christmas for the Ukrainian people, we continue to pray for them, those who are fighting for their lives and for their country. And we pray that you will grant protection and comfort to all the people, but especially to the women and children who are trapped in this war and for those who have been displaced. We especially pray for those who have lost loved ones, so that you will grant them your divine peace and your divine comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth and the giver of all life, we thank you for the mercies you granted to our departed brother Jim during his earthly life, and especially for calling him to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort Joanne and the family and the friends who survive and who mourn his death with the hope of a glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. And keep us mindful, Lord, that we are mortal so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and the minds of all. You know those who are sick and those who are shut in and those who stand in need of your care and comfort. But today we pray especially for you, Linda Smith, for Lon Keister, for Harvey Norris, for Pastor Louis Keneef, for Hilda Keneef, for Betty Mahan, for Bill Mahan, for Jim McCright, for Connie McCright, for Chucky Dixon, for Lyle Diekman, for Pam Irwin, for Alan Kieseker, for Pastor Barry Hinkey, for Angela Porch, for David Stewart, for Kathy Perez, and for David Niesel. We pray your spirit's comfort to be upon each of them, O Lord, that you would guard and protect them in the days and weeks ahead, and that if it be thy will, you would grant healing to the sick and comfort to the afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. And now, dear friends in Christ, as you go forth this day and every day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Please be seated. We close with 597, water, blood, and spirit crying. Returning uh, from their uh, daughter-in-law's mother's uh, funeral uh, that was uh, this past week in North Carolina, so uh, we wish them safe travel. Other announcements? Stick around and help them decorate. Yes. Oh, <laughs> how could I forget? Yes, if you'd like to stay around and help de-decorate, is that a word? Sure. It, is now. it is now. Undecorate. Uh, uh, I think Sarah would, uh, would, uh, would, in, are you in charge now? You got, <laughs> whether you want to be or not, uh, Mary and I have to leave right after service. I know that's a lame excuse, but we have granddaughter Jaslyn and we have to take her back to Kansas this afternoon. So have a blessed day.